Howdy, everybody. So today I have an interesting topic for you to ponder, to peruse, to chew on and digest. This is the topic of picking winning lotto numbers. And we're going to use Python, Jupyter Notebooks, of course. I use this for all my videos. So can we actually improve our chances of winning a lottery? Yes, we can. The chance of winning is, what, I think 292, 1 in 292 million approximate, right? So um, those are pretty bad odds, but there are certain things we can do to, to help our chances of winning, right? We can look at number distribution patterns, any kind of range analysis, odd versus even, almost without exception, winning lotto numbers are not all odd and they're not all even. They're not going to, it's not going to be one, two, three, four, five. It's not going to be 65, 67, 68, 69, uh, or some, some kind of repeating pattern like that. Like that almost never comes up. I don't think, um, that's ever come up. I think that's extremely exceptional. If it even happened, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put any money on that, right? So we can eliminate certain ranges of numbers. We can calculate sums of numbers and exclude um, items that don't sum up to a certain range, right? Because we know one, two, three, four, five is not going to be in that range and because it's consecutive and because the sums of those five numbers are too low, right? And we're not going to have extremely high sums of numbers. I think it goes up to around 300 if you sum up the top five numbers. Uh, so we can look at number frequency, uh, any kind of gap analysis, understand historical trends and patterns, if there are any, and create machine learning models to help us make these types of predictions that might help us uh, gain a slight edge in picking winning combinations of lotto numbers. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and import uh, lotto numbers from the web. I'm going to go ahead and kick this off. This will take probably a minute or so, so I'll run that. Control Enter to refresh and like always I'll give you all the source code so you can copy paste it play around with it in your own Jupyter notebook and see how everything works right so you don't have to make a lot of notes or worry about all the details here in between um, I'm going to share this code with you at the end of the video when I post a video post post all the source code I'm trying to get this URL right here so let me copy that and come down here computers run extremely slow it only happens when I turn on the recorder, but I can't record a video with, with no recorder. So kind of like between the rock and the hard place here. Okay, let me get that and put this over here just so you can see what we're actually screen scraping. And you can see how this thing works, right? So I've got several videos on screen scraping, parsing out HTML elements, using Selenium to interact with the web browser. We need to um, scroll down a few times to click a button to load more data and then do the screen scraping. So I list all that in, in the comments there. So one thing you'll see when you when this page opens up, there's some kind of a uh, little pop-up message, I guess. It's talking about cookie settings. We have to eliminate that or we can't interact with the web page. So the first part of the code just disables this, this thing right here, which is more annoying than anything. Then we can scroll down a little bit. You can see historical Powerball numbers there, right? The first five in white are the uh, one through nine um, combinations, and then the Powerball is listed there in red. Okay, so let me just take you through this uh, down, scroll down a little bit more, and a little bit more. Okay, there's the load more button. So we're going to hit this five times to get uh, more history. Otherwise, all we could screen scrape is what's available on this page, but I want a deeper history than Wednesday, June 19th, 2024. I want to go back to five uh, load more click events, right? So that's what the code is doing. If you look at this, we'll go back here to the business logic. So it's clicking that five times and we're getting, I think close to 200 um, uh, historical lotto ball winning combinations, right? So that's that's what that does. There's the click event and then, uh, yeah. So I had to close that pop-up. That was a little annoying. I wrote the code last night. So I saw that first thing was to close the pop-up button and then you can uh, click this button to load the next page. We do that five times and then you're going to have all your history again. I think it's about 200 uh, lotto winning combinations, give or take. And they put in, in some comments here, use beautiful soup to do the screen scraping. Uh, the first thing is to click the load more button. We do that five times to get the history. Okay, so everything is spelled out here. In, the, in my notes and details, you can take a look at that when you have time. Uh, then we structure the data because it's coming in as HTML elements. I want to get that into a data frame. So it's crisp, clean, tight. 
uh, formatted, structured, and shaped up in a nice, easy to read format. You can see that there. So there's the five clicks. There's the numbers and the dates. Okay. And if we scroll down a little bit more, we get, oh, we get this dragging down. Okay. And we will see the data frame, the head and the tail of the data frame right there. Nice. Okay. So we go back to, looks like Wednesday, July 5th. 2023 and that five click event um task was was some somewhat of an arbitrary thing if you want to go back further you can change it to 10 or whatever you want it is uh it does go back pretty far i don't even know how far but i think it's enough to illustrate the the purpose of what we're trying to achieve today so um yep, so we have all the numbers we get back to a little over a year okay a year and a couple of months then i'm plotting the numbers just to see well, everything looks like and we get a very interesting story here you can see when i hit control enter refresh the cell the plot um i know i said this a thousand times i'll say it one t one more time a picture's worth a thousand words okay so i can describe to you what's happening a thousand words or just show you an image so nine comes up most frequently almost 30 times in the last about one year and one month and 49 comes up maybe only about eight or nine times and Nine comes up 30 times. So nine is very frequent. This is a frequently occurring number. 21, 24, 4, 27 come up a lot. 49 is the least frequent number. But then we have some that uh, are kind of fall into the same bucket here. We have 29, 48, 46, 65, 32, and 57. So we have some numbers that come up very often, some that come up hardly ever. So that's very interesting. I don't know what is causing this. There might be um, slight imperfections on the balls. There might be some tiny uh defects on the balls but some are coming up a lot and some are coming up um not so much right so that is my strategy here i'm going to go ahead and try to leverage this knowledge and use this insight to make some winning combinations of lotto numbers so we have the low numbers um we know those aren't going to come up all together like one two three four five is not going to come up right 65 67 68 69 is not going to come up all, all like that right um so it's not going to be odd, not going to be all even. Most likely there could be exception, but it's highly unlikely. And the sums of the numbers are going to sum to a, a certain range, okay? So we know this for a fact. We are going to try to exploit that. Let me refresh this first and create some rules here, some guidelines or create some, some guard ra guardrails to operate within. Let me refresh this. Okay, and... Okay, now we have all the rules. So let me see what this looks like. Yeah, low versus high percentages. Okay, so uh, we have the percentage calculations here, the lows and the highs, about 2% of the time the numbers are low, about 2% of the time the, the numbers are high. Uh, and this is going to be the 0 to 5 numbers, right? So we know these rules can be leveraged to gain some kind of insight into the data. We have the odds and evens, lows and highs, right? So we have these rules. And the sum of the numbers um, are never going to be within 50. It's never going to be 300 to 350, right? These just don't happen. It just hasn't happened in the history that we've that we've screen scraped, and it just doesn't happen. Most likely, the numbers are going to be summed between 150 and 200. We know that 50% of the time, they sum 150 to 200. About 20% of the time, they're a little bit lower. 100 to 150 so we do have some lower numbers in here that are actually winning combinations and we do have uh just slightly higher over 19 percent. we have 23 percent. that's some between 200 and 250 but you can see about 50 60 70 80 90 90 percent of the time the sums will be 100 to 250 okay so we have these rules in place and we know historically what's been working so we can take uh balance max Right, so we can take some highs, some lows, some odds, some evens. We can sum the numbers that typically um, are going to sum 140 to 180. Okay, we have a high and low balance and an odd and even balance. Okay, we could have two odds, three evens, or vice versa. We could have two highs and three lows, or vice versa. So we're going to implement these rules right here and go ahead and generate a possible winning. Uh, lotto combination right here right now okay so i'm going to do 20 iterations it's a while loop while 
the length of the combinations is less than 20. I'm putting all the combinations into a list indicated by the square bracket right here. Here's the 20. So we do this 20 times. You could do whatever you want. You could do up to 100, right? And we're going to get somewhat random numbers, but we know that they have to conform to the rules that we defined above, all right? So this should increase our odds of picking winning lotto numbers, okay? So, um, and there's one more approach to picking uh, Powerball numbers, right? Because you can win with this combination of five winning numbers, and I believe the the payout is a million, right? So to get that is abs is actually somewhat feasible. To get that, that plus a Powerball is kind of kind of um, almost unrealistic. I'll tell you, it's like 292 million. But um, if we could get the one million prize, that's still pretty decent, right? I'd be pretty happy with that. So we're gonna uh, push our luck and also try to predict the most likely winning Powerball numbers. Again, based on historical outcomes, we know what's happened in the past. Let me hit Control Enter to refresh this. So we have our list of possible winning combinations of um, the white balls, one through 69. Here are the Powerball numbers. Okay, and well, that's pretty much it. Here's the odds of winning. It's 69 uh, over 65 times 26. That will give you 60, 26, and 69 factorial over 5 factorial times 69 minus 5, because you would take out one ball each time one ball is selected, right? Um, gives you 11,283,513. Multiply those together, you have 292 million. So just over 292 million chance of winning this thing. Uh, that's it. But you, now you have a strategy. You're armed with knowledge, with education, with information. I'm trying to drop some knowledge on you guys here. So hopefully that helps your odds a little bit. Um, but, you know, this is just for fun. Um, and hopefully there's no people out there with a gambling addiction or anything like that. I certainly don't have that. Once in a while, we'll play for fun. It is just fun. Uh, but with, with information like this, you can actually boost your odds a little bit in, in your favor. Okay, so that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you learned something new today. Thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.